ahead and begin our commencement ceremony for the Aspiring Leaders Program Cohort 10 of Washington Headquarters Services. As mentioned, my name is Veronica Peeler. I do go by Ronnie. If you hear someone refer to me that way, I'm the same person. Um, and I am the program manager for the Aspiring Leader Program. I want to first give congratulations to the graduates and the participants. And I mentioned this to them this morning. It is a underestimated amount of work and uh, can be a very long haul when you have a full-time job and families and other commitments. So I just want to congratulate you. It's a testament to how hard you work, what you're willing to do, and where you're probably heading. Okay. Um, I want to begin by giving thanks. Uh, very, great, very, very grateful to be in an organization where we have the support of leaders, colleagues, peers that are committed to leadership. And I use, usually say this in some form or fashion. Um, you've been places where there is not stellar guidance and leadership, um, that's not what we're about here. <laughs> we're, we're about top-notch, cream of the crop, and I feel very fortunate, one, to be in this position and learn. I learned probably more from the cohort than we provide in some, in some instances. So it's very impressive, and I want to give thanks to our senior leaders uh, who have continually supported the program. You don't always see that. It's something I think is taken for granted, and so I want to be sure that uh, we do our due diligence in thanking the members of our senior leaders in Washington Headquarters Services, Mrs. Regina Miners, our director of Washington Headquarters Services, Mr. Salesas, who is who is our deputy, always at the meetings, always available to support, takes time out of their days that are extremely busy to support the teams, all of the Washington Headquarters Services directors, um, our special guests, Mrs. Walsh and Mr. Ahmed. Mrs. Walsh is the director of, excuse me, administrative management, and her deputy, Mr. Ahmed, are, have joined us today. Uh, we understand how busy everyone is, including yourselves. I know some of you traveled a long ways to see your participants go through through this graduation process and we appreciate it because it does impact families and friends. So I really appreciate it and it's a, it says a lot about how you're supporting your organization. I'd also like to extend my thanks to our other senior leaders that are in the room. My SES, Mrs. Christine Nolly, and my deputy, Mr. Scott Aiken, my director, Dr. Kevin Driscoll, and all of the senior leaders that joined us from other organizations because you did not have to do that. It's a rigorous process to sign off on these applications and to review a ton of resumes and look at the SF50s and we get packages and they're really, really well vetted. And so I will say again, it says a lot about how leadership sees the participants in this program. and. It's a, it's a long process, but I'm just very, very grateful for our leadership support. Anything we've asked for and any support we need, they make themselves available. They do not have to do that. I have been in places where that's just not the culture. And so, again, I extend my thanks to you. I'd also like to extend my thanks to Ms. Jennifer Zavala. She is our Deputy Program Manager, and I just have a few words that I want to say about her background. Me and Jen have been working together for a very long time, and... I always give my thanks, but I really don't think that, I really feel like it goes underestimated. And so, just to give you some context, Jennifer is an expert in curricular, curriculum design and training facilitation with over 20 years experience in the field of adult learning. Currently serving as an instructional system specialist, executive coach, evaluations program manager, deputy program manager for the aspiring leader program, as in a number of other capacities, a mentor um, and someone I would consider my friend as well. So I just, I can't tell you the haul it is for us to, to put this together. And we're not just picking and choosing classes. There is a rhyme and a rhythm to adult education and learning and development. And Jennifer has the wide breadth of expertise that makes this happen. So I just wanted to extend my thanks to her. Um, and I'd like to also thank Mrs. Kiana Gwen, she's not here, but she's provided extensive support. And Mr. Khalil Shirzai, who is 
who pops up right on time every time. And so we're so thankful for you and I'm very thankful for you and very gracious. And so uh, I won't belabor my remarks. I jumped around a little bit in the interest of time because again, you came here to see these lovely folks. Um, so thank you for again for being here. Uh, we will go through the program today and we'll have several guest speakers. There are programs in the back for you to review. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce again Mrs. Regina Miners, who is our Director of Washington Headquarter Services and our keynote speaker. Thank you, ma'am. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, I'm good now. <laughs> I asked her how she's doing. She said she's good now. So here we are, execution moment. So, um, but hi, everyone. I think the last time we all saw each other was at one of the um, corporate project uh, summaries, uh, the last and final session. And uh, I'm still thinking about that session and all the problem sets that you guys took on. It was pretty darn impressive. And I know that FSD is feeling a particularly uh, benefactor of that of those projects because a lot of that was in their bullseye. So Stephen, I know you and Bob have, have talked very, very openly and very admirably um, on on just the substance of the, some of these bodies of work. Um, but good afternoon, everyone, and you know it's always a great day um, when we're here at a graduation celebration because that means that something has come to an end after a lot of hard work. Um, and th of course, this, this program is all about not only hard work, but determination, competition, sacrifice, and commitment. Um, and so it is today that we're here to celebrate all 20 of our participants in our 2024 Washington Headquarters Aspiring Leaders Program. Um, but again, uh, Ronnie's pretty humble about the water she carries in that big bucket of hers. Um, and so I really want to double down and, and acknowledge her and Jen on just the amount of work that goes in to making this program meaningful. Um, and as you, you couldn't have a better program manager than her. And of course, Jen in a very strong support role. And of course, the whole IOD team. Is Kevin here? Where's Kevin? There's Kevin. Yep, um, you know, together they, they put forth a lot of um, structure to the program, guidance, enrichment, um, all of which kind of make for the experience. Um, but, you know, it's more than just shaping and administering the program. It's a lot of strategic thinking that goes in to ensuring year after year that there's depth and richness and challenge in the program experience. So thank you all for what you're doing year in, year out, not just this year. Um, and of course, adding to that effort is Christine's and Scott's underwrite of the program. Um, you do a lot to make sure that this program um, is resourced, um, is acknowledged and embraced, and of course, importantly, prioritized. Um, and um, as we all know, things don't get done without high-level advocacy and support. And so, Christine and Scott, thank you very much. Um, and to the leaders of the organizations that endorsed each of your participations, um, we, of course, wouldn't have your participants here without your endorsement. And of course, we have participants from my own WHS and many of the directorates inside of WHS. We have a couple of participants from the Office of the Assistant to the Secretary of Defense for Public Affairs. Um, we have the Defense Health Agency uh, representative participants. We have the Defense POWMIA Accounting Agency, and then of course we have the National Security Agency. So I thank you all, uh, leaders from those organizations who have come today to support your participants and essentially be reassured that the, uh, that the support that you gave is, is turning out to be pretty positive, and I think that when they come back to the organizations, even though they kind of never left, that's the hardship of the organization, is that they're going through the program at the same time, they are still carrying on their full day-to-day -day duties, um, that you'll see an enriched professional coming back to you and um, ready to make a difference in your organizations. Um, and of course, family members and peers and colleagues of the participants as well. Um, journeys like this don't happen without support 
um, from all elements of someone's kind of personal eco ecosystem. Um, and so families, of course, are a large part of that, um, as are our peers and colleagues. So you all have a very, very special role um, that you play to make this experience meaningful and, and allow the participants to actually maximize on the experience. Uh, collectively, you all you know, supervisors, leaders, families, peers, you support the critical foundation um, for your organizational participant. So, to the graduates, um, I want to start by thanking you all um, for essentially being a self-starter, for putting yourself in the position to uh, consider nomination from your agency and then to receive nomination and to proceed um, and dedicate yourselves to the nomination into the program. Um, it takes initiative to step up. As Ronnie said, uh, this is a tough program. Um, and again, we are asking you to do it concurrent with the execution of your day-to-day -day jobs. Um, so um, kudos to you, for sure. You've demonstrated, actually, through this, some of the most important qualities of leadership. Um, Self-starting. Um, decisiveness, a lot of courage, and of course adaptability. All of those are key characteristics uh, of leaders. The substance of this program, as you have now learned, is not for the faint of heart. Um, it is rigorous, it has intellectual challenge, it has teaming challenges, it has project challenges, it has analytic depth and writing challenges. So it kind of stretches you on, on a lot of levels, which is really the intent of the program. Um, so you should, again, be congratulated for your completion. Um, it is set your, your success today as you uh, complete the, the year of, of effort essentially has validated what your, your leaders and managers kind of asserted and presumed when they nominated you, that these are no-nonsense, high-performing, lots of potential uh, professionals who they saw potential in you on whatever level, whether it's intellectual, teaming, emotional, you know, emotional intelligence, whatever the spectrum, your leaders saw something in you that thought that if they brought you together through the program, that, that could, those competencies could be sharpened. And where you didn't have some competencies yet, we could start to build uh, the toolbox. So um, again, I think what everybody here needs to understand who isn't in the program and isn't real familiar, uh, this is a um, full-time program where everyone is also doing their full-time jobs. Um, and they immerse, the participants immerse themselves into work and problem sets, many of which they had zero familiarity with. Talking about courage. Um, I don't know about you, but through my career, when I got thrown into stuff that was new, I really felt like a fish out of water. And, you know, you kind of have to coach yourself. You have to be intentional about kind of keeping the calm about you so you can let your positive energies and your intellectual energies kind of come to the fore and, and address your challenges. But, um, but it also requires that you've set a personal standard for yourself. And I've heard from some of you how you've kind of done that for your, yourselves, understanding the challenges that were ahead of you for your teams. Um, and I think that says a lot for people who are willing to set a personal standard for themselves for success and to achieve success. Um, that requires not only self-awareness, but it really requires a lot of self-courage um, because sometimes we are confronting parts of ourselves that maybe we don't want to see, meaning we're not as mature in a certain skill set area, but you've kind of submitted yourself into the learning. And I think that's, that's a very, very important um, personal quality that I've seen and heard from Ronnie and Jen uh, as they've observed it in all of you. Um, so individually, you've set a personal standard. And then, of course, you've come together in your teams, um, setting very, very sharp lenses, 
analytic lenses to the work. Again, work and project sets that you guys had no familiarity with at all. Um, so uh, again, the promise that, the, that your leaders and agency heads saw in you, your intellectual curiosity, your career commitment, your mission focus, all of those things kind of came to bear um, as you press through your work um, month in, month out. You personally had to make the choice to work harder, to juggle, because you had the simultaneity of the work at your agencies plus the work of the program. Um, so you were forced to kind of push yourself, you know, to build a resiliency and your own kind of definition of what it meant to be kind of in this early leadership milieu. Um, and um, that's a very personal proposition. But I think as I watched you guys in the teams and you were briefing your projects, I saw a very interesting team dynamic emerging and everybody demonstrating a little bit of that leadership acumen in your own ways when you were, when you were briefing. Um, I hope you feel that you've grown um, in, because some of the objectives of this, pro of this program is critical and creative thinking. I um, saw a lot of that in the project sets, and I think the directors, WHS, would agree that as they were consuming some of the outputs from your project work, just a lot of the creativity that was coming to the surface. Um, and that was not only driven by individual thinking, but again, you put the individuals together in a team and it creates a whole different output as well. Um, decision making, you had to make decisions in your group. Of course, communication, not only within your group, but then with your consuming um, senior leaders that you were supporting in the project areas. Um, all of those things bring um, a self-awareness about you. Um, not only, again, kind of your intellectual boundaries and, and, and your scope, um, but also your tolerance for the unknown, the complex, um, Analytic rigor can, can be very destabilizing for people because it's hard. Um, but this is the intent of the program, is to sharpen some of those tools um, um, to bring a greater self-awareness um, at every opportunity. Collectively, these aptitudes of creative and critical thinking and decision-making and communication and collaboration, um, they really are the bedrock tools of senior leaders and strong leaders, but they do take time to develop. Um, and through this program, you've taken an important first step in that uh, maturation process. Uh, I think you're all familiar. As a matter of fact, I think some of the readings that you've done is from Jack Welch. Um, but his favorite, probably one of his most um, famous sayings and, and um, beliefs is his comment when he said, before you were a leader, success is all about growing yourself. And that is the epitome of this program, growing ourselves, growing our competencies along the way, so, and they become a stepping stone for more growth along the way. Um, and again, your leaders have endorsed you and supported you because somewhere along the line back at home in the agencies, you've shown these competencies and this level of commitment to grow uh, in support of the mission that you have at your agencies. And then of course the mission of the greater department. Um, a lot of people, that puts them into a, a, not a real comfortable place sometimes. And I think we all in this room have been in places where, you know, we've been forced to like get out there and even if we're not ready, you know, we kind of stumble out there and we say, okay, I'll be as ready as I am today. But um, the nice thing about this program and that it does it in a structured way, it does it with a team who's there. So there's always this support system that's always kind of cradling you along the way regardless of what you're experiencing um, in the programmatic uh, work. Um, so I would say uh, to say thank you to your agency heads and supervisors who supported you in this, um, because the task of a leader is to get his or her people 
to a place where they haven't been. And these are the kind of experiences that normally get us to places that we haven't been. Um, but you've all come through it. You've all survived it. Um, and um, But do say thank you to your leaders for the sponsorship that you got because um, the person that you were going into that ex this experience is clearly not the person you've come out based on the rigor of the program. We've seen the global challenges. They continue um, and will continue. <laughs> um, the problem sets, as we've talked at some of our uh, project briefings, the problem sets are just getting much more complex by the day. Um, they're multifaceted. They are politically sensitive. They're institutionally consequential. Uh, nothing is easy about them. Um, and so I am hopeful that your exposure to some of these problem sets have kind of opened the lid up for your appreciation that um, what you're going to confront in the days, months, and years ahead as senior leaders, get ready, because it's only going to get harder. Um, but that's why we have programs like this, to, to get you ready, to sharpen your lens, and build your talents and competencies, and your character. Character is a big part of leadership, um, so you are ready when the call happens. Um, our institution and our war fighters are depending on a deep bench of talent today, tomorrow, and in the decades ahead and as we move forward. Um, and certainly, this is one of the premier programs that starts to build that talent pipeline um, with a deep appreciation of its participants for uh, the challenges for the future leader cadre. Um, I think, again, what makes this exceptionally satisfying, satisfying for you, I would think, um, you entered into this, there was no promise that you were going to be promoted or compensated or rewarded from this experience. There was none of that. You chose to embrace the nomination from your agencies. And essentially, in choosing, you chose kind of a harder path. <laughs> um, but I think you intuitively knew that you would be better because of it. Um, I, I would say that the corporate impact projects that you did um, forced you to think differently about problems. Um, even though you had the inputs from, your, from the directors in WHS or wherever you were gaining your insights, it, it forced you to think and come together as a team and kind of open the lens up a little bit. That's the beauty of teams. Um, and uh, that plus just the leadership coaching that you got um, and any of the enhancements that were wrapped around you for the build of leadership skills, um, you embraced very, very richly. Um, Ronnie has shared some of the stories on, on just how leaning forward everyone was into their not only their projects, but just the experience as a whole. Um, but it's all about learning. Um, you've heard me say it before at town halls, for those of you from WHS, when you hear me say this, but President Kennedy always says that leadership and learning are indispensable, and that's true. You know, I've been in the federal um, sphere for 45 and a half years. I can tell you, my directors can tell you, they're in a day that goes by that I'm at the table with them. I was like, wow, never knew that one. <laughs> um, but, you know, to, to continue to grow, you have to be receptive to learning. And I think that's what the president was saying when he talked about the indispensability of leadership and learning. Um, so um, your success in the completion of the program um, has essentially once again validated the efficacy of this program. Um, again, we work very hard. Ronnie works very hard with Jen and the IOD group as a whole to make sure that our program methodology our substance, our learning enhancement um, goals are rich um, and make the program better every year. Um, I'm so happy to see, I think last year our cohort was smaller 
this year it's pretty big um, and to me that says that there is this need and this appetite for programs like this where in a in a safe zone but with rigor people can get into learning and maturing their skills um, in an institutionally meaningful way. I mean, a lot of the problems that you all worked on, these weren't just like some made up somethings. They are <laughs> big needs down there in FSD or wherever the project was. Um, so I am very glad to see this cohort as big as it is because essentially it's, re, it's doubling down on the validity of this program and the fact that we need more programs like this to build leaders for the department for the years to come. Um, you have spent a lot of time, a lot of time. <laughs> Ronnie reminds me how much time is involved in your reading, your learning, your teaming, your project development, your project presentations, your consultations. Um, you know, these are things that some individuals would say, not for me. Let, let somebody else stand up. That's let them go, you know. Um, but I think the fact that you've embraced it says something right away in terms of how you stand out from your peer group. Um, again, if people choose not to want to do that, that's fine. Um, but the fact that you have um, kind of propelled yourself into this space is very, very um, telling about kind of what you want from not only your experience, but your career and where you want to have value for the department. So, uh, you know, I have nothing but high praise for you and the work that you've done in the last year. Again, I've been so happy to be a part of the, the presentations um, along the way. Um, they, again, I think you would agree as teams that the challenges that maybe on day one you saw both in your prospectus and your project areas and it's like wow I'm not sure I can do this um, but journeys like this challenging journeys like this are always much less onerous when you have a team and you have a supporting infrastructure that um, helps you navigate um, the complexities um, not only of the experience but kind of the psycho-emotional piece of this because there's that internal growth that's always going on as well um, because I'll tell you, no matter how seasoned we are, um, we all need support and a safety net. I need one all the time. <laughs> That's my director team. Um, so, um, but again, I think you need to give yourself a little um, pat on the back. Um, lastly, I just wanted to say, when I was reflecting, I thought, you know, last year I think we did this in November, if I'm recalling, the first week of November, it was a little later. This week, we're doing it today, which is September 10th. And earlier this morning, and maybe some of you participated in the Pentagon family um, event for 9-11 out in the center court, um, where we all gathered as a Pentagon family um, to never forget those who were here on 9-11 um, and woke up that day but never went home. Um, and then there was others of us who we're fortunate to have survived one of the darkest days here in the, in the country, um, but be here to continue to serve. Um, I think it's, it's, it's fitting because that day birthed a lot of leaders, people that didn't see themselves in a particularly impactful role, but all of a sudden with a catastrophic event and multiple challenges along the way, They've said, got to step up here, got to step up. Um, and so that day birthed a lot of leaders. So I think it's kind of interesting that today we're kind of ushering you back to your organizations that much more equipped, um, you know, to do whatever it takes. You never know. You know, you have to be courageous. You have to be professional. And in fact, you have to just be co completely ready. Um, to do whatever needs to be done, as we saw on that day. Um, that is the call for leaders, to embrace the imperative at hand, no matter how daunting it may be. Um, so as you move forward, 
leverage what you've learned, leverage that new person that actually you kind of are now after this experience um, and grow that, build off of what you've learned um, so that you're ready to go when called because you never know when that's gonna happen. Um, so in close, again, my personal congratulations to you. Again, I, I've loved sitting in and talking through your project areas. Um, you know, clearly you all are committed. You have a, a, a very ingrained sense of duty. You love your department, your agencies, um, and you're loyal. You're loyal. It's very clear that you're loyal to the mission and you're loyal to doing whatever it takes. Um, and to that end, I hope that the program delivered to you what you expected and hopefully a little more. I want you to make sure that you provide all the feedback to Ronnie and Jen um, because our job in building and sustaining this program is to make sure that we intake all the feedback from those who've matriculated and make it bigger and better for the coming year. Um, um, but again, maybe I sh I'm gonna say this bluntly, but I hope we, pu we push you out of your comfort zone because <laughs> that's what we were supposed to do. <laughs> um, and remember, I, I think, you know, I think Jimmy Carter just turned 105, I heard, or something. Amazing. But his wife, Rosalind Carter, you know, he, uh, she and um, President Carter were very, very involved, you know, in Habitat for Humanity. And she is, she off, you know, she didn't say a lot, but when she spoke, um, her words just resonated. And one of her important commentaries on on leaders um, she's talked about service but she's also talked about leaders and she says great leaders are made by going places they don't necessarily want to go but ought to go so with that I thank you all for you know your commitment your dedication to yourself and to your teammates and to the overall cohort um, and, you know, you've just done a great job, and, and I really thank you. And I know the directors, WHS, thank you, and your agency heads, thank you. So with that, Ronnie, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. Thank you again, Ms. Miners. Your support is unmatched, and we really, really appreciate it, and it does not go unnoticed. I know I've said this to you before, but oftentimes in you all's positions of leadership, you don't always hear that from us. And so to you and your team and all the leaders in the room, thank you. It is appreciated, and um, it, it has definitely made a difference in where we choose to work and where we choose to spend our time and our commitment and our energy. So thank you. Up next, just to give context to our participants, uh, guests and friends, family, colleagues, this is a 12-month program that these individuals have gone through over the course of the year. In the beginning, many of them do not know each other. It's a very, very diverse program in the context of where people sit, the type of work they do, their perspective in the Department of Defense, and then we pull them all together throw some work at them and say, go figure it out together. So, but it's a little more structured than that. During that time, they build really, <laughs> during that time, they build relationships. They work on teams. Sometimes it works well. Sometimes it gets a little hard. That's the nature of life and work. And then we're in the real world. And that's one thing that you always hear me talk about. We want to set you up for what it's going to be like when you go back and get out there. So I have seen someone use the word evolution this morning when we were meeting, and I have seen a grand evolution in the team individually and the cohort as a whole. We ask the cohort to select a graduation speaker every year via an election. So this year, I'd like to introduce Mrs. Megan Fedorchik. Come on up, Megan, to do be our graduation speaker. It's our graduation speaker and the participants that can really speak, I, we observe, but that can really speak to um, on behalf of the cohort and the experience. And so that's what Megan will provide for us today. Thank you, Megan. 
Thanks, Ronnie. No pressure, right? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor to be here today to speak on behalf of the WHS Aspiring Leaders Program co Cohort Number 9. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Megan Fedorchek, and I work for the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency. <laughs> On behalf of our cohort, I want to thank you all for being here today. Today's ceremony is the culmination of 12 months of hard work, which began many, many months ago, not, it was more than 12, uh, in the spring of 2023, when 45 applicants from various DOD agencies across the country vied for 25 seats in this program. As already mentioned, we had to garner recommendations from our supervisors, their leadership, and our senior agency leaders for the opportunity to earn one of these coveted spots. But that was just to get our foot in the door. The hard work hadn't started. During our orientation last October, we spent many hours discussing the curriculum and the course load. I was overwhelmed to say the least, or as Mrs. Miners put it, we were gonna get pushed out of our comfort zone. Um, and I was uh, extremely worried about my ability to commit to the program. I was burnt out at my job. Uh, my son, who had just turned one, was coming home with either a new communicable disease or a new tooth every week, um, and I thought that was a great time to add something else to my plate. Um, just being realistic. So I debated dropping out, but um, I knew that would be detrimental to my pride and to my credibility. So I stayed, and I'm glad I did. Speaking with my fellow classmates in the many months since, I learned I wasn't alone in that feeling, not only on that day, but on the many occasions since throughout the program. Having the time and space to share our concerns really demonstrated the sense of community that we built as a cohort. Because we felt comfortable enough sharing our experiences with each other, I know it made this experience in particular much more meaningful, and I'm glad we were able to finally share in this final chapter of our journey here together. Today's graduation ceremony highlights the realization of a lot of personal hard work as a lot of institutional effort that I wanna ensure does not go unnoticed. Before I share with all of you some of the highlights from our experience together, I'd like to express my gratitude to the individuals who got us here. Thank you first and foremost to Mrs. Miners and her outstanding team of WHS leadership who have spent countless hours evaluating and guiding us through our corporate impact projects. It's been extremely energizing to see the amount of time and effort that your team has spent with us, not only on our projects, but to ensure that the cohort received invaluable hands-on work experience with projects affecting the Department of Defense at this time. I don't believe I have spent this much time sitting down with senior executives across the entirety of my federal service. And for those of you who don't know what the Corporate Impact Project is, it gives us this hands-on experience that Mrs. Miners already alluded to, and they were not easy. And as she mentioned as well, they were things well outside of our skill set. Uh, throughout the course of the program, multiple team, team members from the leadership team sat down with us one-on-one -on -one with what little time they already have in their schedules to help us work on these projects. This experience allowed me an opportunity to say without any hesitation that our leadership at WHS truly cares about shaping the workforce of our future. Also within WHS, the team within the Human Resources Directorate, particularly Jen Zavala and Ronnie Peeler spent many years and hours developing, learning, and teaching the course curriculum to ensure that we all had a worthwhile experience and ensured that that curriculum followed the DOD civilian leadership development continuum. In addition to the course material, managing a program and creating a leadership training course that lasts a year is a Herculean effort, and we want to thank them for their hard work today as well. And on my thank you tour, um, I also want to say a thank you to my leadership at DPAA who recommended me for the program. Both Mr. McHagg and Ms. Winbush are here today and I thank you for taking the time out of your day to be here. This has been an amazing opportunity filled with growth and collaboration and I really appreciate the chance to be a part of this group and represent our agency. And last but certainly not least, I would like to say thank you to my fellow cohort participants. They tried very hard 
to impress upon me the art of patience as I constantly raised my hand. I thought I was gonna get a participation trophy in class, but I didn't. I guess this is my participation trophy. Um, accountability as we tried to keep each other on task in between seminars with all of the outside work and projects. And most importantly, the true meaning of teamwork. In particular, no offense to the rest of the group, my corporate impact project team who collectively went above and beyond to make sure we were all pulling our weight together as a group to complete our project. I'm happy to call you all my colleagues and my friends. This year during ALP, we learned about ourselves, each other, and were challenged to do interesting things like improv. That was a very fun day. <laughs> um, or to do really hard things. Well, some would say improv's hard, but I won't. Um, to do hard things like having crucial conversations or reflecting on our 360 assessments. We interviewed senior executive service members, senior leaders in our agencies, and obtained mentors. We participated in three in-person week-long seminars, created and briefed multiple presentations to our SES panel, and completed a final paper, all while balancing our day jobs and our personal lives. But regardless of the assignments throughout our time together, I was constantly amazed by the vast level of diversity our cohort represented, which we all learned about during our introduction session during seminar one. And I continue to be inspired by the level of talent that our WHS and DAFA senior leaders submitted for this program. The group before you here today represent GS 11 to 13 personnel who work within the Department of Defense, whether it is WHS, DHA, or the National Security Agency. In our cohort, we have multiple individuals with PhDs, retired military service members, data scientists, contract specialists, team leaders, former experts in the private sector, as well as many others. The group here today represents professional job series, skill sets, ages, genders, and education. And this, di this diverse level of experience has allowed me to personally learn more about myself, and I appreciate that we at the DOD have opportunities such as these to really sharpen our tools, as Mrs. Viner says. Knowing how much we've achieved collectively as a group already, I look forward to seeing how much more we will accomplish in the future. But before we depart today, I wanna to leave you all with a quote from Simon Sinek that reminds me greatly of our first day of class together. If there are people who care, there is always hope. Classmates, thank you for giving me hope in the Department of Defense's future. WHS leadership, thank you for giving me hope in the department's current leadership. And to the rest of you, thank you for being here today. All right, without further ado, we're gonna move into the presentation of our certificates for the cohort. If Mrs. Miners and Mrs. Zavala would join me on stage. Mr. Sebastian Anderson. Ms. Tanika Andrews. <laughs> Mr. 
Miss Megan Fedorchik. Mr. Brandon Green. <laughs> Mr. William Henderson. Mrs. April Holt. Dr. Megan Ingvalstad. Miss Takethia Jordan. Mr. Daryl Lamont Joy. <laughs> Congratulations. Mr. Roger Labrie. This is Paige Mazzi. <laughs> Dr. Cato Milview. <laughs> Dr. Jessica Motherwell. Mr. 
Mr. Joshua Murray. Mrs. Nicola Noble. Mrs. Megan Reed. We do not have one participant here today, but I want to acknowledge Mrs. Kimberly Robinson Leach. Thank you. Mrs. Pamela Scherer. Mrs. Hillary Schoen. And Dr. Loretta Walker. <laughs> Thank you so much, and if we could give one more round of applause for our entire cohort. She's telling me, just get off stage. <laughs> <laughs> Again, thank you all for being here today. As I mentioned, uh, the cohort does vote for speakers every year. And this year, we did actually have a tie. And what we decided to do was have both Mrs. Fajorchek and Mr. Daryl Lamont Joy speak for the cohort. Daryl um, will be giving our closing remarks. We did it, we did it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as we conclude the 2024 Aspiring Leadership Program Ceremony, I find myself filled with pride and optimism because, because for the past 12 months, we came together as one and developed as future aspiring leaders. Today is a day of celebration, a day to honor the hard work determination, and the achievements that brought each of us here to this moment. This is more than just a ceremony. It is a milestone, it is a milestone that marks the end of one chapter and the beginning of one. This program has been more than a series of workshops, discussions, plus deltas, and corporate impact projects. It's been a shared experience of growth, learning, and transformation. As we prepare to step out into the world beyond these walls, I take a moment to reflect on the journey that brought us here. Think of the challenges that we've overcome, 
the knowledge that we've gained, the friendships that we've made. These experiences have shaped us, prepared us, and empowered us to face our destiny with confidence. I also want to acknowledge the support system that has been by our side throughout this journey. Ms. Miners, thank you for your vision and your strong support of the ALP program. But I want to personally thank you for the words of wisdom you gave me the day I shadowed you. To the WHS senior leadership, we want to thank you for your time and your support you provided to this cohort but to my very own acquisition director and director, Mr. Sanders, thank you for showing me what leadership looks like. To our corporate impact sponsors, to our coaches and our mentors, thank you. But to our biggest supporters, to Veronica and to Jennifer, they have shared in our triumphs and our challenges and today they share in the joy, we thank you. Before we conclude the 2024 Aspiring Leadership Cohort, we would like to express our heart thank thanks to everyone that came out to be with us here today. Have a wonderful evening. Once again, we did it. All right, so for the next hour, what will be, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just joking. We have to, we always build in the time just in case because I take it serious. Um, thank you all for being here. For those of you who travel, for those of you who are in the building, for those of you who got on the 7M, who drove here, who had to find parking, who had to get escorted, it's a big deal. That's a whole show. Um, <laughs> and to those escorts that supported each other and the cohort that supported each other, I can't express how happy I am. And this is like the fruits of our labor, Jen and I and our organization. And I've been very blessed to work in a career field that I happen to love. Uh, everybody doesn't get to say that. And so while I'm super, super emotional, <laughs> it's not about me, it's about you, and I'll see you, uh, I'll see you in the big screen. Thank you all and safe travels if you're traveling. Have a lovely afternoon.